as coronavirus spread in the U.S., one of the things that coronavirus does is it, it gets into your lungs and it makes it hard to breathe. And so an increasing number of people were ending up with COVID-19 in the ICUs needing to go onto ventilators. And the U.S. didn't have a lot of uh, ventilators. There was a report by Johns Hopkins that said that the U.S. had about 160,000 of them. And that sounds like a lot in normal times, but it isn't right now. As this was happening, uh, there were discussions back and forth about what was happening in, in key industries and especially auto manufacturing. Of around mid-March, you had the major U.S. auto manufacturers realizing they were probably going to have to start shutting down plants. And in one case, uh, with the Ford Motor Company, CEO Jim Hackett, while he was talking with the White House staff about the likely impact of the coronavirus on the auto industry, sort of just blurted out, you know, maybe Ford uh, should should help make some ventilators because there's this recognition of the, the big shortage between what we have and what we're likely to need. Different companies are talking to medical device manufacturers and trying to figure out, well, how exactly could we maybe help, um, you know, fill this gap and, and, and help expand uh, production of these devices pretty quickly. How do you get disparate pieces to be assembled and moved out? Automotive has perfected doing this with just in time, you know, so that you aren't sitting on billions of dollars of inventory. And to try and create that from scratch, there were, we had no relationships. Uh, we, we did an amazing job. We were able to pull all that off. General Motors is working with Ventec, a new player in the medical device industry that has a very highly regarded, compact, portable ventilator. Ford teamed up with GE Healthcare and Aeron, a small Florida company that has a relatively low cost and easy to build model. In the case of the car makers, which are losing money right now because they're not manufacturing vehicles and auto sales have just tanked, they're really not making any money on these ventilator projects. In each case, both General Motors and Ford are simply trying to have their costs covered to set up and establish these new production lines on site at their factories. We're not looking for a contract. Um, we'd like, can we have a verbal agreement that will we'll be really transparent and ethical about, about the cost? And we really don't want to profit from this. GE and Ford said, it's just not the time to profit. They said, yeah, you know, tell us what we need. And we said, well, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up with you on that. I think that created an air of, you know, Ford's just trying to make this happen and they'll settle up at the end. Ford's goal with Aeron is to produce 50,000 ventilators by July 4th. In GM's partnership with Ventec, the company has a basic goal of getting to 10,000 units a month that it's producing out of a Kokomo, Indiana auto parts plant. The company also has a contract with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to deliver 30,000 of the devices uh, for the national stockpile by the end of August. GM was one of those phone calls that immediately went from a conversation and went from zero to 60 very quickly. It was immediately understood that they could bring a lot to the table as far as helping us with supply chain and bringing on new suppliers to source parts more quickly. GM also understands mass manufacturing, mass production. Ventilator manufacturers tend to uh, manufacture ventilators in the thousands per month. Uh, we immediately started thinking outside the box. How can we ramp up our production? Our supply chain, just to give you a perspective, we build an F-150 every 52 seconds. This is a machine that the prices are seventy dollars to $100,000 per copy. So it's, it's, it's as or more complex than a ventilator. For both General Motors and Ford, this has meant quickly securing some new manufacturing equipment setting up new machines, training workers how to operate those machines, and making sure that everything is up to the necessary medical standards, specifications that are required for ventilators. There's a very complex supply chain for ventilators. Each piece that goes into it is made by a different subcontractor. So it's not just like it's one manufacturer that's making the ventilator, it's the ventilator manufacturer relying on this entire ecosystem of qualified subcontractors. 
each manufacturer would have their specific line and what their capacity is for the day. And one way of increasing your capacity is going to a second shift or a third shift. Every time that you um, add to the system, it goes back to your quality. All of that needs to be tracked according to the quality system set up by the FDA. There's a quality system that you have to meet and you have to take the time to do the documentation for a ventilator for a life support system like a ventilator if you were brand new and hadn't had a ventilator in the marketplace it probably takes about 18 months um, you know to to go through that process it's been a lot of talk about ventilators and a lot of you know very well-intentioned uh, very smart people building ventilators overnight uh, but a ventilator particularly a critical care ventilator is much more than just moving air in and out if you're giving the patient too much air and you're overinflating that lungs, you can cause harm or death. And if you're underinflating the lungs, you can cause harm or death to the patient. Eventually, there will be a sufficient supply of ventilators, but it's going to be very delayed. These are complicated devices. They're not going to be ready in April. More will be available in May, June, July, and, and, and as the months go on. So. Um, that's the good news that, that uh, places that will have the, a greater need in the months ahead, the supplies will be better for them. It's a real problem right now for places like New York and New Jersey that, that really have an enormous demand.